A few weeks ago, I built this tiny PC, which was super easy to build. I made a step-by-step -step guide of how to put this PC together, explained the use of each PC component, showed how easy it was to create a Windows installer and install Windows on a new PC. And then I also showed what drivers to download and install to keep the PC running smoothly. It's an easy video to follow and quick to watch, so if you haven't seen it, I will leave a link to it in the video description below. I highly recommend checking it out. First things first, this PC is hot. I don't mean hot in a sexy way. I mean, it does look good on a desk with its tiny size and minimal aesthetic. When it comes to thermals, it runs hot, specifically the graphics card. It's just one of those things to expect for a case this compact, with no case fans to extract heat or draw in cool air. The only cooling options are the fans from the low profile CPU cooler and a graphics card. Fortunately, I have a solution. I will undervolt the GPU and CPU. For those who aren't familiar with undervolting, it's essentially reducing the amount of power from your power supply to your GPU or CPU, resulting in less heat generated, lower power consumption, and in some cases can even improve performance. At the moment, playing games like Call of Duty's Warzone or when this PC is on load, the GPU temps can reach up to 85 degrees Celsius and the CPU around 75 degrees Celsius at stock settings. The graphics card can handle temps of 85 degrees Celsius, but for long-term use and peace of mind, it would be ideal to get the temps down to somewhere in the 70s or even lower would be good. To undervolt the GPU, I'm using MSI Afterburner, which is free to download. If you've never used Afterburner before, there are plenty of videos on YouTube to help you set it up so you can monitor your GPU and CPU. The MSI Afterburner skin I'm using is called Dark by Drerex Design. By default, this is the card's frequency, voltage, memory clock, and the fan curve is disabled. In the Heaven benchmark, temperatures reached 85 degrees Celsius, using around 111 watts of power and getting 105 frames per second. For a balanced setting and if you want to maintain the same FPS but at lower temps, we can simply undervolt the GPU. Go to the graph editor, click on this little dot at 900 millivolts, raise it to 2535 megahertz, highlight it from 900 millivolts by clicking the left mouse button and drag it onwards. Hold down shift on your keyboard and double tap the enter key to flatten the line. Make sure you enable the fan curve here. You can see and edit the fan curve by clicking on this. You can change the fan curve to a steeper one if you wish to cool the GPU even further. Just bear in mind the fan noise would be louder. I have mine set to a default fan curve. And the result I got in Heaven Benchmark at the same scene is 70 degrees using around 90 watts of power with 105 frames per second. So I've managed to bring the temps down by 15 degrees Celsius, power consumption down by 11 watts and maintain the same FPS at 105. So not bad for a simple undervolt. If you like this profile, make sure you hit apply and save it to one of the numbered profiles. For the best FPS settings, and if you want a slight increase in FPS, we can also do that. First hit reset, tap on a dot at 900 millivolts. This time, hold shift and drag the entire line up to 2535 megahertz. Then from 900 millivolts, highlight it onwards and double tap the enter key to flatten the line. Go to the memory clock and type in 800. This will increase its total to 9300 megahertz. Enable the default fan curve, hit apply and save the profile to a number. In heaven, in the same scene, GPU temps hit 72 degrees at 92 watts with 108 FPS, meaning temps went up by two degrees, the power consumption went up by two watts, but we managed to increase the FPS by four. I know these gains aren't much to brag about, but at least you know you can get slightly better FPS, temps and lower power consumption than you would at stock settings. But if you're like me and you want the best temps and prefer your GP to run cool at below 70 degrees, then you want to set up this profile. Hit reset, drag the dot on 870 millivolts to 2400 megahertz. From 870 millivolts onwards, highlight it, hold shift and double tap enter to flatten the line and then enable the default fan curve. Make sure you hit apply and save it to one of the numbered profiles. In the heaven benchmark at the same graphic scene, GPU temps are now 67 degrees Celsius at 85 watts hitting 101 FPS. So compared to the card at stock settings, that's 18 degrees lower temps and 26 watts lower power consumption, but you do get four frames per second less which I'm not too bothered about because for me, significantly decreasing temps and power consumption is worth taking a little hit on FPS, which isn't much by the way. So how do these settings compare in an actual game?
If I had to choose out of all the settings, I would go for the best temps, as I think it's more important to keep this little thing cool rather than gain a few frames per second. What do you guys think? Which GPU profile would you choose? I noticed when playing Warzone, the CPU temps went to around 75 degrees Celsius, which is perfectly fine as the limit for the CPU is 95 degrees Celsius. But to prolong the lifespan of the CPU, I prefer to keep it as cool as possible. We can do this by also undervolting the CPU. It's real simple. Download Ryzen Master from AMD's website. When you load it up, there is a basic and advanced view, but we're going to stick to basic. The limit for the CPU is 95 degrees Celsius. By default, the maximum clock speed is set to 4400 MHz, and the CPU voltage is set to auto. In control mode, tap on manual, change the CPU clock speed to 4000 MHz, and then the voltage to 1 volt. Hit apply. On the left, you can now see the maximum clock speed has now changed to 4000 MHz, and the maximum CPU voltage is now 1 volt. Let's see how this affects the temps in Warzone. You can see the CPU temps are currently around 74 degrees Celsius. After applying the undervolt in Ryzen Master, the temperatures start to dip and stabilizes around 60 degrees Celsius, which is 15 degrees less than it was at stock settings. If we combine this with our GPU undervolt using the best temps profile and compare it to the stock settings for both GPU and CPU, there's a huge improvement. GPU temps went from 85 degrees Celsius down to 68, with only 4 FPS less than stock settings, and CPU temps went from 74 degrees down to 60. So undervolting both the GPU and CPU has made such a difference for this PC. The fact that we can achieve these temps with a PC this small with no additional cooling is pretty good. If you do fancy building something similar to this, I'll leave links to all the parts I've used for this PC in the video description below. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thanks for watching.